Yes, ma'am. Sure. Thank you. Uh, ma'am, uh, can I just have two minutes to introduce our chairperson, if that's okay? Uh, just a second. Um, uh, Sharmishta, ma'am, until that, just stop the sharing. Uh, okay. After we announce your name, you restart the uh, sharing the screen. Sure, I'll do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, Nidhi, are you going to put the brochure on? Yes, yes, I'm doing that. Yes. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Kamalika Ghosh, uh, former director and associate professor, Jadavpur University. Uh, she has obtained certificate in one year course in Buddhism uh, from Jadavpur University. Uh, and she is involved in installation of uh, miscellaneous science uh, museums, uh, guided several PhD thesis on various aspects of museum, especially on illumination. Uh, she has published over 70 papers, uh, guided three uh, guided PhDs out of which three have been awarded. Uh, books, uh, she has published books on history of West Bengal, uh, is a reviewer of various international journals, including academia.edu, and she's a life member of Institute of Science, Engineering and Culture, Indian Society of uh, Lightning Engineer, Institute of Engineers India, Association of Engineers India. Uh, Ma'am, it is an honor to have you with us here today as the chairperson of this paper presentation, uh, presentation session. Uh, we can now begin the presentations. Thank you, Mali. Uh, our first presenter uh, is Dr. Mr. Chatterjee. And the title of our paper is Gendered Roles and Agencies Situating Women in the Religious Landscapes of the Nalanda uh, Hinterland. Ma'am, you can start presenting. Yeah, I hope the screen is visible and I'm audible, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so first of all, I must thank you all, particularly history enthusiasts, the team. Uh, for organizing this webinar, uh, Nandan Shastri sir in particular and I must congratulate uh, Nidhi and uh, Manali for all the hard work and dedication. You know, we have so much to learn from young scholars like you. That, that is what I'm seeing from the last two days. Okay, so uh, I'm given to understand that I have six minutes for this presentation. So I don't know how much justice I'll do to it, but let me try. So I will be, this is a part of my project which is funded by uh, Indian National Science Academy where I'm trying to study the cultural landscapes of uh, Nalanda uh, Mahavihara and uh, what I'm going to talk on today is the hinterland area as you can see from the map there are a couple of sites historical sites already reported from the Chinese pilgrim records later they were explored and re-excavated by the colonial surveyors and also in the post-independence period Many of these sites are marked with structural edifices, lesser order Vihara sites, a lot of these cultural remains. Now, for today's paper, I will concentrate on particularly how the modern population in this uh, hinterland area, particularly women, relate to this past, relate to the heritage and what kind of perceptions, what kind of uh, religious rituals they follow uh, in order to commemorate this past and uh, that is what I'll, I'll talk on today and I'll take uh, examples uh, from a couple of sites here. The first site that you can uh, see here is Burgaon. So the village Burgaon is actually an extension of the Mahavihara site. It is, uh, you know, it is known for the mounds and a lot of sculptural remains and as you can see these remains are now embedded within the temple premises. This is the Suraj Kund temple and it also has a large tank. So the entire Nalanda area as seen from the satellite imageries is, is guarded by a large number of water bodies and this is one of it. And uh, what is interesting is the, uh, you know, post from 7th, 8th century, we see that other than Buddhism in this area, which has been prevalent from early historic period, we have assimilative trends with the Brahminical cults, you know. Uh, particularly a strong presence of the Shakti Kal. Now here uh, we can see that how women are engaged in celebrating the Chhat Puja, one of the most important uh, you know, occasions uh, which is celebrated in the northern and middle Gangetic plains. And this is largely in uh, the memory of uh, the uh, sun, sun worship and also Chhatti Maya. 
so they have three to five days of rituals and uh, fasting songs and all, all of that so what is interesting is when i asked uh, the uh, women in these uh, this village they said that they are following these customs particularly to fulfill the wishes of their husbands and children they have nothing to ask for themselves you know and what is interesting is also that while they are menstruating they cannot participate in these rituals so in three to five days uh, they have to be uh, they they think they are pure when they are not menstruating and they participate in the rituals at barga and the next site which is very interesting is gosrava which is also reported as a a uh, lesser order vihara site is known for this asha puri temple now what is so special about this temple here the local deity which is there is known as asha puri devi now this is the deity that we are looking at now what is interesting is we could identify the other sculptures here but the main sculpture here is presently under worship they did not open it naturally because uh, she is being worshiped what i could make out after discussing with the priest that you see here uh, Pendraji is that the child, uh, the the goddess here holds a child, right? So she might be a Brahmanical image or might be a kind of a Hariti image. We do not know because uh, we didn't see the image. But what is interesting is women in this Asha Puri temple premises they are only allowed regularly to offer their pujas or reverence. for progeny they come here for blessings for progeny but during the navratri festival there's something something some special rituals are held here by the priests where women are not allowed why they are not allowed because the worship here is done according to the tantra forms during the navratri festival so uh, basically all throughout the year women are permitted but during the navratri festival they are debarred from going inside the temple premises Uh, here again, when they are offering the puja to the goddess, the goddess is domesticated because she holds a child in her lap. The other village, which is just very near to uh, Gosrava, is Tetrava. Here also, it's a female deity, a Brahminical image, possibly. And every Monday, we see that the females of the village they do a special rite, song, and rituals in reverence to the deity. now the deity here is not worshiped singularly because we also have a shivlinga within this temple so here the goddess is domesticated the goddess the fierce aspect of the goddess here is subdued by she is made sublime by the presence of a male deity which is of course shiva and uh, due to the dearth of time and not being able to tell you about the narrations and the songs that they are performing these are largely as if shiva is the maharaja and the goddess is the maharani of the village so the shrine is also known as maharani sthan here moving on these two images these are also from the same village go straight hand images marichi Now, both are uh, you know uh, buddhist goddesses the marichi is the buddhist goddess of dawn but what is interesting when i ask them that why they are not kept into the shrines or kept inside the temples like you have done for the others they are saying that these goddesses have to be kept in open premises right so they cannot be kept in enclosed chambers now these two goddesses have you know now assume the role of a local cult was worshiped by the local villagers particularly the women to ward off the uh, epidemic ward off any evils so she is these two goddesses have almost assumed the kind of a character of a local cult who is like also a protector of the village so that way she is uh, seen what i found very strange is about a very miniature sculpture of the goddess of a brahmanical goddess uh, having four hands here uh, uh, possibly this goddess because uh, the others could not be identified we also have a surya and vishnu image now this is completely put into the realm of a modern house and they have named this area this shrine within the modern house as tripura sundari devi so here this shrine is only meant for the women of the household that they will worship and the worship happens only on thursdays on only special occasions you know they would call in the priest from the asha puri temple or any other temples which are there nearby to do the rituals but this is largely you know uh, meant for the uh, uh, women in the houses uh, local women uh, they do come but only the permission of the uh, puja and the offerings is given to the domestic uh, women of the houses so uh, 
these observations that we see here point to the fact that heritage has acquired new meanings, which does not stand frozen, but forms a continuous tradition conditioned by the patriarchal norms and prevalent social structures. These instances are to be contextually identified. So we cannot generalize that women have very similar roles in all the villages. No, it cannot be generalized. So we have to do, you know, contextually identify how these images are being used, how these images are making new meanings, uh, new places, new shrines are being dedicated to these goddesses and gods. And from the rituals to the offerings of wishes, the entire discourse associated with the historical past allows women a position which is acted upon by the external agencies on which she has little control. Women feel emancipated on certain occasions when they perform in groups or take a ritual bath in the Suraj Kund or something like that. However, her movements and her religious participation remains measured and confined to the domestic realms or the peripheries of the village beyond which she is seldom permitted to connect. So I'm thankful to these uh, bodies and uh, I'm again thankful to history enthusiasts for bringing us all together and letting us share our ideas and uh, yeah. Thank, Thank you, you. ma'am. Thank you so much. I hope it was within six minutes. I don't know. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yeah. So if uh, anyone has questions, they can ask. Uh, excuse me. Uh, I have a question. Yes. Hello. Sure. Yeah. Sure, ma'am. Uh, can I ask? Uh, I wanted to know that uh, these Bajrajani uh, uh, goddesses like Tara and uh, Marichi, how are they worshipped? Are they worshipped in accordance with Bajrajani um, system or uh, Brahmanical system? Ma'am, they are, I would say it's a mixture of more of Brahminical and folk rituals. It is nothing, it has no Buddhist connotations. The only Tantric proper ritual that is followed is in the Ashapuri temple that we have seen. The open shrines that we see is has a lot of these amalgamated forms of worship where it's a bit of Brahminical, bit of folk and also, you know, if you can remember on one of these sacred groves, they're also tying that dhaga. So uh, uh, every every Wednesday or Thursday they do that to fulfill their wishes. So I would say it's a it's not that way a Buddhist ritual. Uh, no. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, so there, there is one more part. question uh, by Dr. Kushal Singh. So you can unmute and ask your question. Please unmute. Sir, this is in village Gosrava, which is very near to Nalanda. Uh, uh, Gosrava, Tetrava, these twin villages. Ashapuri is in Gosrava village. But but you know, ma'am, uh, in the north northern India is always mm -hmm. the uh, peat place. Is the uh, Chimunda Devi, Jwala Ji, mm. and, and others. Then the one of the Asapuri is the is always uh, staying in Himalayas. You know. Oh, oh, uh, this is oh, uh, I didn't know that. Always, oh, okay. Yeah, yes, this is a very popular temple in Himachal Pradesh, Asapuri. Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. a very uh, ritualist and uh, mm -hmm. believish, believish temples in maybe Kangra. It's the Kangra region. Yes, yes. yes it, it's always located in Himalayan regions. Then the maximum number of north. Northern peoples are going to the uh, visits for the uh, special visits for the children's site. Oh, yes, <laughs> this is exactly number, maximum, also. Number, maximum number of uh, people are visiting uh, mm -hmm. in the reason to the for, uh, children. Progeny. Yes, exactly. Yes. Dr. Kushal, I agree with you. And uh, I must say, if, uh, if you look into the sculptural art also, this region has a lot of Tibetan influences. Yes. Even we are trying to read the inscribed images. I've already read three and I'm writing on that. So it has a lot of Tibetan influences, not only on the sculptural art, but also on the epigraphic style also. They have that kind of thing. Yes, uh, I completely uh, agree with you. PhD study time, uh, that's covered in my study area. That's the oh, Asari, okay. Asapuri is always uh, located in Himalayan regions. Uh, then my PhD is thank out. you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, 
thank you, sir. Uh, there is. We will take a last question. Uh, it is from uh, our honorary president, Dr. Nandan Shastri, sir. Yes, sir, you can please unmute and ask the question. Oh, uh, Sharmista ji, uh, yes, Gujarat me uh, Asha Puri jo temple hai, uh, hmm. wo Asha Puri mata amar Kul Devi bhi hai. Hmm. So, maine abhi uh, apka lecture chal raha tha. तो गूगल किया तो ये जो तांत्रिक विधि का जिक्र आपने किया तो पुजारी का पुरेंद्र जो करके नाम दिखाया गया है तो किस तांत्रिक विधि की पूजा होती है वो गोपनीय रखा है तो तो जो औरत है तो सब तो वो रिबेल नहीं कर सकती कि क्या गोपनीय है क्यों उनको एंट्री नहीं Yes. Sir, you know, I tried asking the priest that could you tell me because I am a researcher. Could you please? They mm-hmm. did not. Even they did not agree to open the image. Also, in rest oh, of yes. the areas, they opened up. But here, yes. I don't know. So I couldn't get mm-hmm. the answer. But I am still looking into it. Why? No, and no, the no. women are. But doctor, sir, but doctor, uh, I am correct for uh, sorry, uh, sorry, but I am correct for your line. Agar me iske upar apko batao uh, in the side of northern India. In, in, it's a study. It's a not a in point of my my side, but it's a study. ये जो सब तांत्रिक के ऊपर मैंने बात किया सारे का सारा. You know, it's a very popular in Himalayan ranges. It's the black magic uh, in the region. But अगर हम इसको जोड़ें जैसे डॉक्टर साहब ने भी इसको कुलदेवी के साथ जोड़ा. तो यस आसा आसा पुरी को हमारे वहाँ पे भी कुलदेवी के इससे जोड़ा जाता है और ये तांत्रिक को तो बिल्कुल अलग से दे� देवी और देवते के स्थान पे तांत्रिक वर्ड को यूज करना में भी इट्स नॉट ए गुड बट यस दैट्स द स्टडी देन इट्स पॉसिबल मे बी मनाली यस या सॉरी टू इंटरप्ट दिस वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग डिस्कशन बट आई डू वांट टू रिमाइंड दैट वी हैव टाइम कंस्ट्रेंट्स एंड वी विल हैव टू गो टू द नेक्स्ट पेपर यस यस आई विल जस्ट स्टॉप शेयरिंग थैंक यू ऑल वंस अगेन Thank you, thank you so much, ma'am. So our next presenter is uh, Kandula Savit Savitri, and the title of our paper is "Inspired Women in Hindu Religion." Ma'am, you can start the presentation. If you have PPT, you can share. Uh, you are on mute, ma'am. You are on mute. Uh, ma'am, please unmute yourself. Savitri ma'am please unmute yourself yeah good evening to all ma'am my paper presentation share screen uh, yes please no ppt okay. only word document okay Ma'am, this is. Uh... Yes, ma'am. You can start presenting. Uh, please keep it. Uh, keep your paper in uh, within six minutes. You will see this, ma'am. Yes, yes. We are able to see. see. Yes, please continue. Good evening, dear. Good evening to all. My name is Kadhila Savitri. My topic is inspired women in Hindu religion. In this paper. i i would like to share uh, my opinion in uh, uh, mahabharata the role of uh, kunti and uh, draupadi subhadra and some more characters uh, in this uh, paper presentation in time limit and uh, page limits uh, i will i only i write in kunti character only uh, so in i will continue this the ramayana and mahabharata we are also well known in this uh, indian culture to consider to the epics of the indian history the epics are significant in the hinduism and indian culture and the civilization from that point in the present day these have been extricably entwined in the way of life in indian people we have been giving gaining knowledge about idol administration to people 
sentiments for brother and sisters and siblings thus ramayana also gave good things that was respect to the parents and teachers in this we also learned the difference between dharma and adharma through the mahabharata for example uh, in dharma and adharma and also but we will achieve success in the end on the other hand we if we follow the path of adharma even if we are happy in the beginning we will we will end up the failing and other we will come after us have the same awareness in the mahabharata we are introduced a large cast of characters proof the people depicted in mahabharata serve as model of modern humanity for the purpose of my research paper i have chosen a few of these women and investigate how they came to regard as model for other women there are numerous ex- exceptional qualities that are exemplified in this re- religion such as kunti greatness draupadi nobility savitri's dedication amba courage and rukmini's love these are characters in the in this uh, paper epics puranas inspired women roles society peoples in kunti de character of the first uh, role model if we observe the person of kunti devi we will notice that the she exemplifies the perfect mature woman she was the mother of pandavas who walked the straight path and she was the known for her compassion in furthermore that lord krishna's grand aunt and also sister of vasudeva these are all we will we will know uh, all this very well kunti's early life kunti original name was prutha the name of kunti mother's name marisha and the name of kunti's father is surasena he ruled the kingdom of yadava people as king since his close friend and the ruler of madhura kunti boja did not have any children for his for her for his own sorry mistake surasena gave kunti boja parental rights of his daughter see uh, kunti boja adopted uh, kunti or prutha according to the mahabharata and bhagavata purana she was also called as kunti devi due to the fact that the grew grow up near the kunti boja kunti wealth of virtue patience love to god and restraint help her gut along well with every one from the time she was a young youngster until the reached adult adulthood childhood to adulthood during the reign of kunti boja one day one of the brahmin monk by the name of durvasa mahamuni who was known to be a renowned ascetic visit to kunti boja home as the guest he has foaming with the rage he is a quick to curse anyone who does not fulfill his needs even if it is not done to his specification or the satisfaction of more therefore if he is coming every king will be terrified of his arrival this kind of person travel to the kingdom of kunti boja uh, ma'am please conclude in 2 minutes one or 2 minutes okay yes. ma'am please uh, um <laughs> uh, two to... minutes are there ma'am you can conclude in one or two minutes continue ma'am kunti boja service to mark durvasa mahamuni he gave a boon to her that's she got five children and also uh, she, she told her uh, step the uh, sister and she also got uh, this uh, boon to get gain Ma'am, 
Kunti Devi is a powerful woman who went into exile after instructing the Pandavas to rule and live public. From the beginning to the end of the Kunti Devi existence, she is portrayed as selfless, compassionate, unselfish, and caring individual who teaches who teach children about duty. I believe that she can serve as a model for contemporary women in many ways, allowing them to create a joyful family life. Thank you to all. This is the first time my presentation in English, ma'am. So sorry <laughs> if uh, any mistake. No problem, ma'am. Thank you so much, uh, Savitra. Yes, uh, uh, I I am always uh, talking in Telugu, so that's why I am fearsome. No problem, ma'am. Thank you so much. The language is not a barrier, uh, ma'am. I have a question for you. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, Kunti can become an ideal for modern or contemporary women, and uh, you also mentioned about her various qualities that she is a uh, unselfish compassionate caring selfless etc uh, my question is is it necessary for a woman to be selfless and compassionate uh, sorry of course compassionate but is it necessary for a woman to be selfless and uh, uh, to be unselfish all the time in order to be uh, considered as a good woman yes we will uh, continue that uh, why because so we are uh, 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 maintain role of the mother and uh, sister and uh, daughter in law and all so many characters so in this uh, area some areas compulsory we will maintain selfless uh, regarding the our uh, 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 circumstance and also our culture always uh, selfish mind we will gain not good uh, future in this uh, world also. So uh, in this uh, present uh, scenario, always we will think the only my family, uh, our family only safe. Those are uh, I I don't know. That is the um, uh, till. So we are the only selfish uh, self uh, self uh, mind people uh, nowadays. We will see uh, always uh, all areas. So some good qualities we will take in uh, Ramayana and Mahabharata. Our culture is uh, extended uh, our uh, okay. generations, future generations, ma'am. I don't know clarity. I will it's, it's okay, give clarity or not. I don't you, know. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Kushal. There is one more question. Yes, from Dr. Kushal, sir. So you can unmute and ask. Ma'am, that's a great study. But ma'am, it's my one question. Ma'am, Mahabharata ko karwane ke liye iski sabse jada bhumi ka rahi isme. Mahabharata ko karwane ke liye Mahabharata jaise hua, to usme kiski sabse jada role kisne sabse jada play kiya? Yes, who is the woman playing the role of Mahabharata? Mere ko apne jaise aap study mein saara jikar hua hi hai. Kaun si aisi mahila thi jisne isko karwane mein sabse jada role play kiya? I don't know, madam, in Hindi also. <laughs> uh, ma madam, sir is asking uh, whose role, which woman played a very important role in causing the Mahabharata, in making Mahabharata happen? Yes, yes, that's the same question. The main role. Why? Because Kunti uh, is the um, she, she has, she is starting, she is uh, her uh, sons, she said, no, we don't have any uh, um, kingdom, so please come. She said that type of uh, um, matter, then they are uh, silently, but she don't say that type of uh, uh, talks. Why? Because she always said in Bhima also. We are, I am the mother, I have always encouraged my children, whatever you gain, whatever you work, hard work, you will, do, you, will you did that, so you will gain any, so that's why she always you, said that type of, uh, um, I don't know, uh, so thank that's you, why she, she was the main role, I think. 
so that's why i am taking the good mother good daughter and uh, good thank you ma'am thank you thank you. thank you so much ma'am thank you uh, dr uh, dr kushal sir i think it uh, the answer was draupadi according to my knowledge uh oh, yes, ma'am yes, please uh ma'am please stop your sharing screen sharing please stop the screen sharing uh yes thank you ma'am thank you so much so our third presenter is uh, santosh kumar the title of his paper is the invisible hand of patriarchy in india reading patriarchy through culture and rituals so you can start your presentation oh. if you have okay. ppt am i odd? no i don't have a ppt uh, are we speaking yeah uh do am i audible uh, yes sir yeah you can continue. okay 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 uh as you can see the title of my paper is the invisible hand of patriarchy patriarchy as reinforced through rituals and customs now why the why i have chosen this particular title is because uh patriarchy is something which is understood as a structural change but rather what i am trying to understand is how patriarchy can work through symbolic means through means where people don't even realize that they are being part of the patriarchal structure and not just that they are playing a part in their own oppression we are the oppressors and we are the oppressed in this patriarchal structure because a lot of time we are unable to understand the symbolic values of what we are doing in our day to day life now this particular paper focuses on the kind of uh, religious rituals the customs the liturgical tradition we follow in our day to day life and we don't realize how deeply patriarchal and how deeply uh, they are set up against the women and how they are suited for a uh, petri local petri arkal and petri linear society now uh, the paper, i have divided the paper in two three ways uh, the textual understanding the liturgical understanding the ritual the customs uh, i will try to just just put everything together uh, as far as the uh, textual tradition is uh, concerned i have chosen particularly three texts not because these texts are very are uh, very popular or something they are very popular but more so because these texts are normally we do find these texts in our day to day life in our homes uh, even when we don't even read them these texts are bhagavad gita uh, durga shapchati or the school called devi mahatamya and the ramcharitmanas these texts are texts which have a very strong liturgical value every year in some or other ritual we uh, we take out these books we worship them so they have a liturgical value and most of the time we recite them why i'm saying recite them because we recite them without even trying to understand what many of these shlokas many of these verses are actually saying what how they are very conveniently talking about a patriarchal setup and women are rele relegated to a particular role in the society take for example durga shapchati i think uh, in april uh, month we uh, uh, march and uh, uh, we had uh, ram navmi and there were nine days of the 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 recital of durga shapchati now it is uh, ascribed to markandeya and it is said that it is uh, written for uh, durga uh, devi it is the nine avatars of durga uh, uh, or the devi but if you see the verses they are clearly written from a male point of view there is a very uh, uh, important verse in this text which says patni manorama manovrit anusarinim tarinim dur sansar sagrasya kalo dubhavam so what basically it is called uh, basically fal shruti when after uh, reciting the prayer you ask for certain kind of gifts you ask that okay i have done your worship now give me sir provide me certain thing you ask for money you ask for child you ask for all kind of prosperity now what the person is asking is patni manorama manovrit anusarane give me a wife which works according to my will right clearly it is being written by a man taranem durut sansagr ka sagrasya kalo dubha which means that who is uh, who allows me to gain emancipation uh, soteriology uh, and uh, which uh, furnishes my uh, uh, lineage so all these things are patriarchal anxiety to carry out your lineage to basically gain gain emancipation and uh, who works according to the will of a person right and it also as a uh, raises this question is emancipation moksha what we call is it meant for women or the whole notion of what we consider emancipation what we consider soteriology what we con consider eschatological thing is it something which is also provided from a male centric point of view 
wherein you, the whole uh, the riches and the wines and the women and the apsaras they Sir, all condition in one minute okay they are conditioned according to mere sense similarly in ramcharit manas we find a verse which call uh, uh, sati anusya savat atita anusya samad which is amit dhani barta bhaye dehi adam sunari jo sevana dehi that means a man is the one who gives you everything and a woman who doesn't uh, serve her uh, man and doesn't uh, press her feet is uh, damned to hell right similarly in bhagavad gita in the first chapter arjun says adharma abhivavat krishna pradyushanti ko striya trishu dushta asu vachane jayate varna sangra which says that if i kill my own kinsman that women will become promiscuous that means they have taken men have taken the agency that if, if men are not able to keep their uh, uh, life alive they are uh, the women will uh, there will no control for women and they will get characterless and it will create varna sankara so what we see throughout these texts which are very commonly found in our home which are very commonly recited on our home these texts are uh, locating this patriarchal virtue yes so in conclusion what we say that uh, this is these are the invincible hand of patriarchy through which uh, a lot of patriarchal notions are uh, conditioned and we are becoming part of what you call the nude makeup which is to say that culture is appropriated in a way that it appears that it is a natural phenomena which it is not it is very much socially conditioned and conditioned according to the needs of a patriarchal society thank you very much thank you sir if anyone has any question they can ask we have a question in the chat box uh, the question is asked by dr geeta ma'am uh, do you mean to say that there was no matriarchy uh, that is the question sir uh, there was see there is a difference between matrilineal society and matriarchal society see uh, even if they are matriarch if there you find uh, evidences of uh, women playing a very important part it is always it is always a saying that women always belong to it is always through some agency that um, uh, women are able to extract their agency it is either uh, being most of the women who are seen as matriarch uh, derive their agency because their sons are uh, kings so it is the older women who are more responsible more uh, conducive to uh, acquire this kind of a uh, notion of a, uh, authority but we do hardly and find ed- evidences where uh, we find a female only uh, notion matrilineal you know, society would do fine even there males are able to dominate the economic proceeding uh, like in kerala or meghalaya it is not the women who are uh, dominating the economic uh, social thank economic apparatus yeah thank so thank i you, thank you so much Uh, thank you santosh kumar sir for your presentation thank you thank you uh, so our next presenter is uh, anandya sanyal and uh, priti rawat the title is women in early medieval kashmir uh, who will be presenting uh, good evening ma'am uh, i am anandya and i'll be presenting the presentation so sure. uh, uh, So, uh, shall I uh, start my uh, like share my presentation? I have a PPT sure. with me. Sure, you can share, sir. You can share the PPT. Are you able to share it? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Is it visible now? Ah, uh, yes. Ah, uh, please make it a uh, slide share. Yes. Ah, uh, I guess it's done. Ah, uh, like ah. Uh, it's now in the slide share mode yes sir sure you can continue yeah so good evening to all the scholars and make it full today. screen uh, yes ma'am please press f5 yes ma'am uh, uh, sir share the entire screen uh, not a window uh, reshare the screen and select entire screen option so that uh, the whole screen uh, will be with people You can press F5. Yes, ma'am. Uh, sir, you uh, exit and reshare the PPT and select entire screen option. Okay, ma'am. Just yeah. Second. Stop the sharing and again re. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. No, no, just uh, you uh, at the top of this first line in the keyboard, you will find F5. Yes, ma'am. I've been pressing that, but uh, I guess it's uh, Control plus F five. Uh, no problem, sir. You can continue with this. No issues. 
just a second, ma'am. Just a second. I will start to share. You share. I'll. Uh... Ma'am, is it? Uh... Yes, we can stop share. Yes. Uh, now again share sir and select the entire screen option. Is it uh, okay ma'am? Just a second, it's loading. Yeah, make it slide share sir. Yes. Is it okay, Norman? Yes. Yes, yes. Perfectly okay. okay. You can begin. Okay. Good evening to all the scholars and uh, professors present. I am Anindya from Varanasi. I would uh, first of all, I would like to thank all the members of history enthusiasts for giving me the opportunity to present the paper. So the title of my paper is "Women of Early Medieval Kashmir." It is co-authored with Preeti. She is my fellow postmate. So we'll directly jump to the content. So the introduction is the paper aims to throw light on the women during the early medieval Kashmir. We'll go through certain uh, key factors to get a better understanding of our like uh, of the topic. So the sources that we have, the first are the literary sources. So the most important literary source that we have is Kalhan's Ra uh, Rajtarangini. These are the chronicles of Kashmir from ancient times till his own time of about 19, uh, 1049 and 50 CE. It gives information about the rulers, kingdoms, the society in general, and other things. We also have Shemendra's Samay Matrika and Nilmat Puran. These two also sheds light on the 11th century and uh, like Neil Matpuran from the 6th to 8th century, Kashmir society, its history, geography, religion, folklore, and even satires on the upper class and the government. Next up, we have the archaeological sources. These are very less in number and often re uh, requires corroboration with the textual, uh, like with the texts that we have. Like the, uh, the most important epigraph that we have is the Srinagar inscription. It was donated by Dharmank in 1992. Uh, on the top right, we can see a uh, part of the Srinagar uh, inscription. In this, uh, Didda, the wife of Shema Gupta of Yashaskar dynasty, was referred as Rajan. It is an interesting gender reversion that denotes her power. In terms of coins, we find coins issued by Sugandha. We find coins of Shema Gupta and Didda. In all these coins, we find the power and influence of these women. Women in ancient Kashmir. Ancient legends claims that the Kashmir is the land of goddess Parvati's material manifestation or her birth. It is uh, the place is the Aparneshwar temple in Mantalai Udhampur district. We find the first ruler, the first woman ruler of Kashmir as Yashovati of Gonand dynasty. The time period is often uh, uh, referred as unknown. The legends claim that she was just a shadow. In fact, the rule was to justify Lord Krishna's infatuation that all beings seated on the throne were a part of Shiva. Next up. We have women as royals. First up, we have Sugandha. She was the wife of Shankar Varman of Utpal dynasty. She accompanied him to a fatal war where he eventually dies. And then she took, uh, she becomes the guardian of her son, Gopal Varman's reign between 1902 and 1903. She then took over the throne between 1904 and 1906. She was greatly influenced by her treasure and lover, Prabhakar Dev. This caused a lot of unrest and revel from the courtiers and royal bodyguards. She did overcome the most of the rebel, but finally got ousted. 
we find masculine epithet of shri sugandh uh, shri sugandh deva on her coinage she again tried to took over the throne in 1914 but she was captured and finally executed asani yes. please uh, uh, con uh, conclude in one minute uh, okay so uh, then we have didda she is often referred as the most powerful women ruler uh, of kashmir and in the early medieval period she also took over uh, she started as a descendant and later took over her after her grandson's demise in 1980 and 81 and ruled till 1003 ce she was very fierce and uh, like she crushed and quelled all her rebels and uh, we earlier we came across the shrinagar inscription where we find her uh, masculine epithets of deva and rajan we also find a very common type that is the shema gupta deva that we were earlier discussing uh, like uh, her influence on her husband we do find certain uh, women who were ruling behind the throne like suryamati uh, wife of anantavarman who like presided over the administration the dictated orders and Sir, please even, conclude as soon as possible okay uh, she even passed the forced to pass the throne to their son at the end if we uh, like come to the conclusion we find that women were part of education like they were given education very freely botany sciences like botany and other uh, especially sexual sciences were given to the upper caste women we also find women as donors and builders like uh, didda uh, constructed abhima abhimanyu swamin in the abhimanyupur as a, the temple in uh, remembrance of his uh, of a son we also find uh, like marriage was an important institution there were um, specific festivals like uh, iram manjari puran where women were uh, like married women were celebrated with garlands and flowers and i believe that uh, in the secondary or the uh, modern critical works women like didda have been uh, like referred with uh, adjectives like dissolute notorious but i guess it's uh, completely unfair as there are no such uh, or much widespread uh, adjectives used for men and we do require a better uh, analysis and definition of these powerful women thank you thank you sir we have a question from uh, sharmishtha ma'am ma'am you can unmute and ask the question hello aninda that was a nice presentation i just had two observations not even questions you know i was wondering like uh, i am always uh, you know when i read my work is also on the early medieval period i am always fascinated with this two characters sugandha and didda so are you aware that there's also a town named diddapura Yes, ma'am. It was there. Like, uh, I guess I ran short of time. It was yeah. uh, like Didapura was uh, like she had a town named on her, on herself as well as her son Abhimanyu Pur, where Abhimanyu right. Swami Temple was. Right. And uh, we also find I uh, whatever I can remember there is a, also a town called Sugandhapur mm -hmm. that was right. uh, like uh, built up by Sugandha. Uh, and you are uh, quite uh, uh, i mean correct in saying that you know when you read the uh, rajtarangini there's not a very good impression that uh, kalhan leaves for these queens you know they are seen not really with a very good perspective so you are very correct in saying that i actually wanted to ask about what are the what is the male perspective of looking at these queens so you have already covered that thank you anand that was a nice presentation thank you so much ma'am Uh, thank you so much, uh, Ninda Sanya, for presenting. Please uh, uh, stop the screen sharing. Uh, I guess one is done. So our next, yes, yes. Thank you so much. Our next uh, presenter is Dr. Uh, Karabi Mitra, ma'am. Uh, the title is uh, "The World of Rituals: A Study of Vrata." in bengali hindu women's life thank you so much madam i don't have any present uh, ppt 
so i will just uh, discuss uh, the planning of my paper since there is time constraint so full paper will not be uh, submitted now so at the outset i, I should uh, greet uh, our uh, respected uh, honorary president of history enthusiast group uh, nidhi madam manali madam and other officials our respected chairperson and uh, the scholars and participants as well good evening to everybody so as per the uh, title of my uh, paper uh, i will uh, deal with uh, the world of births actually uh, these births are rituals special rituals uh, observed by hindu women uh, of bengal in fact in india there are different uh, rituals in every corner of the country and my focus is on undivided bengal and another point is that most of these rituals are defunct nowadays because of the change in the lifestyle of women still then these uh, maybe in some rural pockets <coughs> these are uh, existing so the world of hindu women's life is full of rituals and births of various types in varying degrees the births were observed in all parts of india this may be explained as regional cultural statements in the present paper the births of bengali women will be highlighted i, I have already told that agricultural past is a major source of inspiration of most of the births conservation of environment is a significant component and this plays an important role the sources of information are mainly field study uh, articles of journals of uh, i mean during the 20th century published during the 20th century or maybe late 19th century and some uh, research works as well so uh, first of all we can divide the broths uh, in two sections two major sections one is shastric and another is feminine i'll not go to the shastric part because shastric part is usual uh, worships uh, beginning with the uh, vedic uh, customs and conducted mainly by the priests i am coming to the feminine part and this feminine part can be divided uh, into several sections like births observed by unmarried girls married women widows and general births so what is the difference between shastric births and this feminine births this the latter one they are basically in vernacular medium shastric is not used and we uh note the use of local dialect of bengali local deities are mainly worshiped sometimes absence of caste system is also noted because the women observe the births uh, in a group usually in a group and sometimes there is no priest women themselves worship the god or goddess now i come to the <clears throat> common features of a brat one is the presence of a pachali or brat katha that is the story behind the uh, introduction of the brat number 2 is alpana so alpana is uh, the painting style this is a unique painting style of bengal usually 
uh the uh, rice uh, I, i mean atap rice i i don't know what is uh, uh, called in english uh, atap rice is uh please conclude it is that uh, uh, how, how how what is the time now i'm on one minute one minute is remaining one minute so okay so and and we note that this type of paintings these are ritual paintings we note the stylized projection of natural objects uh regular household articles luxury items like ornament and according to some scholars interestingly the designs resemble some ancient scripts also one interesting part is the wide use of onukalpo or vicarious items so avanima chego discuss the origin of these broths and explain the probable connection between primordial communities belonging to rice culture then what is the significance of nowadays defunct i i have already told that these are most of them are defunct still we see them because we want to understand the social scenario of the ancient days and we may take help of these brat kathas interestingly some brats are uh, project uh, syncretic religious system the gender creation process of hindu society may be understood the necessity to conserve environment is present in some brats and these acts as community reunion in rural areas especially of women so in a way i should conclude that in a way these brats were a tribute to the natural lifestyle of rural india thank you so much madam uh, thank you ma'am thank you so much for your presentation if anyone has any question please feel free to ask i think there are no questions so we can move forward thank you so much uh, ma'am okay uh, so next presenter is uh, shabnam preet kaur gill and uh, dr kushal singh title of the presenter is a study of women and religion ma'am there was uh, some problem in my laptop to my phone pe present kar sakti hu sure Yes, yes, sure, sir. No, please, sir. Sure. Wait, ma'am. Ma'am, is my screen is visible? Uh, no. There, there is no. Um, no. Nothing is showing here. No, it's Wait, not visible. Ma'am, is now visible? Ah yes yes. Good evening to all of you. I Shabnam, research scholar from City University, going to present my paper on women and religion under the guidance of Dr. Kishan Singh, the associate professor at City University. So, women and religion. The study of women and religion, examining the women, the context of different religion faiths, the include. consideration of the female gender in the religious history as well as how the women are treated and participated in the different religions the women and religion in india we can see that india is a diverse country with the different religions in which we are practice different religions and every religion have their own rules and regulations and according to that they are treated the women differently there are a number of religions like hinduism Sikhism, Jainism, Buddhism, and so on. The role of women in the religious and the different religions and traditions. Women have played a significant role in the different religions and traditions throughout the history. The Hinduism is one of the oldest religion in the world, 
and where the uh, women are treated as the shakti goddess and divine and the hindus goddess are associated with the equality and creativity and there are the number of other religions where the women played a important role as i told uh, sikhism buddhism christianity islam and jainism hinduism hinduism have played a important role where the hindu religion tradition and throughout the history hindu uh, where the god uh, women goddess are treated as equal as the uh, men god and they are uh, worship in the temples as the form of durga kali and saraswati but there is some uh, uh, there is some discriminations against the women in this religion like sati where the woman has throw herself into the uh, her husband's prayer and where the woman's head is shaved after the death of her husband next sikhism sikhism where the women are considered equal to the men in the term of separate spirituality and the social status sikhism teach us that the women are equal to the men as uh, guru nanak dev ji some famous quote where they wrote in the part asta di baat and they uh, write that so kyun manda akhe jit jamme raja ki uh, jehdi uh, aurat a so which woman jo uh, uh, lady hai ek aadmi ko birth deti hai kings ko birth deti hai और भगवान को भी बर्थ देती है तो हम उन्हें बुरा क्यों बोलते हैं ये चीज गुरु नानक देव जी ने बोली थी अपनी गुरबानी में सो नेक्स्ट बुद्धिज्म बुद्धिज्म आल्सो प्लेज इंपॉर्टेंट रोल अ वुमेन हैज बीन अ टॉपिक ऑफ डिबेट वे द बुद्धा हर सेल्फ अलाउड अ वुमेन टू ज्वाइन द मोनेस्ट्री ऑर्डर व्हिच वाज अ सिग्निफिकेंट स्टेप्स टुवर्ड्स द जेंडर इक्वालिटी नेक्स्ट क्रिश्चियनिटी वे द वुमेन प्लेड अ इंपॉर्टेंट रोल थ्रू आउट द हिस्ट्री एंड दे हैव बीन अ माइग्रेनलाइज्ड द न्यू Testament mentions several women have this pile of Jesus, where they do, uh, worship the Jesus and give her uh, whole life to Jesus, and they spend their whole life as a nun in the churches. And in Islam, in Islam, women have been active participate in the religious lives since the time of Prophet Muhammad. Women have played important role as a scholar, poet, spiritual leaders, and so on. In a Jainism. Jainism the women also played an important role throughout the history where they uh, participated in religious practices ancient Shatnam, times include in one minute okay ma'am so uh, here is a graph where they show the uh, population of women in the different religions and, and there maybe, are the maybe 3 minute 3 minute is left so the total minute is 6 minute na then six, maybe 3 minute is left so okay. she started on 7:14 Okay, she can take two more minutes. No problem. Exclusion from the religious leadership rules, as we see in the different religions, the women are not allowed as the leader guru uh, or the main uh, uh, guru in uh, not in the gurdwara, not in the temple, not in the church, or not in the even Islamic. So where the women are treated equal, but not equal opportunities are given to the uh, women, as we see in the Islam. the men are prayer uh, on the different place and women are prayer uh, pray uh, in the different place same as in the uh, uh, hinduism we see in the history like the women are not allowed to go at uh, cremation activities or in the marriage activities they stay at the home at the time of any uh, function or any other activity and see in uh, in the sikhism but with the time uh, with the modernism some uh, equality and the leadership roles are given to the women and with the time this uh, uh, with the time this thing is developed and the women are treated as equal as the uh, men in confusion the relationship between the religion has been complex very through history across the different cultures some religions give the equality to the women but they have some barriers and some restrictions where they do not give the proper equality as to the men so uh, on the last i only say that women have through so many years to get a equal uh, uh, status and equal uh, duties or equal uh, 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 status in the world as a man and it, it will take us uh, so much time so in the last the relationship between the women and religion is the complex and multifactored with the both positive and negative aspects thank you thank you so much shaban uh, shabnam preet kaur it was a very wonderful presentation 
uh, we i appreciate your presentation it was very nice if anyone has any questions uh, they can free oh. us uh, hello uh, i have just uh, yes uh, i have just uh, comment on uh, one part this is a very good paper and, thank you ma'am uh, yes uh, thank you thank you ma'am uh, to the young scholar so uh you have written that buddha uh, he uh, actually allowed uh, women to join the sangha but uh, i think you know that uh, you uh, if you go through uma chakravarti's uh, book that uh, buddha was uh, not in uh, he did not support the entrance entry of the of women in the sangha so mahaprajapati gotami she uh, actually wanted it and she uh pursued ananda and uh, ananda requested buddha to uh, permit the nuns to enter the sangha and buddha uh, commented that the buddha. sangha will exist at least 5 years less five, sorry 500 years less if Uh, due to the entry of the nuns still then we can say that uh, buddhism is better to its uh, attitude towards we so this is just a uh, i also want to make a make an observation here sure. i saw your slide on uh, uh, jainism there was a slide that uh, you couldn't present unfortunately uh, but i saw that you had written about the bible and the uh, judaism uh, in that slide so uh, was that a confusion or, or was it related or something i just had a glance at it i couldn't read the entire thing mm. maybe it's the jainism and uh, in confusion to jainism and uh, yeah the title was jainism and the matter was related to judaism judaism maybe it's a uh, yes that's maybe it's a uh, yes there might be a confusion i i, I, I always uh, just oh, let her answer yes 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 instead of you telling us yes okay i uh, shabnam you are on mute it was confusion ma'am okay it happens please uh, do correct it later on oh. okay <laughs> that's the only confusion ma'am we are not a address to the jainism we are a address to the judaism but it's a maybe first title slide is maybe changes yeah, it's, it's fine it happens uh, i think we can move on to the last presentation yes yes we are uh, thank you so much uh, shabnam pri uh, thank, you. Last, thank you so much our last presenter for this session is uh, Kusum Lata Gautam and her title is Hinduism a Women Culture. Kusum Lata, are you present in the session? I did not. I did not see anyone with that name in the list of participants. Yeah, I guess she is not so, present. Yeah, I think. Uh, uh i have her number should i call her uh, i we, we have done everything from our side uh, yes i think it is now time for ma'am to give her remarks as a yes. person of the so, uh i request uh, kamalika ghosh ma'am to uh, recite her uh, uh, chair person talk remarks presidential remarks actually I have uh, gone through all the presentations, hmm. but um, I think everybody is given their views in different ways. But uh, in my con remarks is over and above, not on the pre each presentation, that we the, our subject is women and Hinduism. in hinduism we all we worship ma durga as a supreme deity but in real life we do not 
paid attention, heed to rather women at various age. Whether she is a lady of 20, whether she is a lady of 60 or so. But she always continues rituals for her family members. In uh, what Madam say that some brothers are there for the well-being of their families. But uh, and Punjab, in Punjabi ladies and others, they also worship for their directly for their husbands. But alas, there is no such rituals for ladies. Um, so I think it is time now to start similar thing, not in the form of religion, but in the social culture to accept their position in the uh, society. Uh, you can see that uh, in big companies, women are at the top nowadays. You can see the what uh, Shottaji uh, tribe has pictured this in his famous uh, movie Mohanagar. Uh, uh, about 65 years back, he could conceive that idea that in society, what may be the position of women. So, and uh, we uh, have discussed on the sacrifice of various ladies in earlier times, like uh, Kunti, Draupadi, Shita, etc. Have you ever thought of Shanta? What made uh, torture she has to face? Kunti, uh, Shita, and Draupadi, they were forced to undergo that sort of sacrifice. But with consequence, and for some uh, uh, benefit from his, her father, he, she was punished. So I think that must be stopped. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Uh, I thank all the presenters uh, for wonderfully presenting their papers and expressing their thoughts and enlightening us with uh, newer perspectives on her story. Uh, I thank uh, uh, Dr. Kamlika Ghosh, ma'am, uh, for chairing this session. Thank you so much, ma'am, uh, for spending your valuable time uh, with us. Thank you, ma'am. And uh, I also thank our uh, Honorable President, uh, Srinandan Shastri, sir, President Ms. Manali Mumaya, and all our executive committee members, advisory board members. And of course, again, uh, all of our presenters. Thank you so much. Uh, we will end this session now. And uh, the next technical session will be starting soon. Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, let's take a five minute break for that. Uh, let's all uh, join back here by 9.35 and we can start the session at 9.40. The, uh, the session by Professor Rekha Pandey on Hinduism and gender. Sure. Thank you a lot. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Recording stopped.